Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Swati from Both as Parents and this time the purpose of our educational video is to guide you about INBD and the dilemma that is associated with it. Before I move ahead, I would like all of you to like and subscribe the video if you like the material that we provide and also don't hesitate to ask any questions about INBD or any other topic you would like us to discuss and we can always make a video and clear your doubts. Moving on. So what is this dilemma that is associated with INBD? On a very daily basis, we usually are getting questions about what is INBD or what is the difference between INBD and NBD1? Is INBD more difficult as compared to NBD1? Um, and that's why we, I thought of coming up uh, to explain about the difference between INBD and the previous dental boards. And uh, you can decide on your own after this video um, as to what is difficult and if it's the same and do, should you be really scared as you all or most of the people are about the material, about the content, about the exam conducting pattern. So let's try to figure out the exam together, exam pattern together and um, I'm hoping that by the end of the video you would be in a much better position as what as when you'll be starting now. Okay. So if you go uh, to your um, JCNDD ADA website, you would actually see the details of the exam, Integrated National Board Dental Examination. The site provides you the, all the information that you need to know about eligibility, about registering for the exam, about DA administration fee, uh, and the type of examination. In terms of the eligibility criteria, in terms of the registration, it is not very different from NBD1 and NBD2, it's almost a similar. Also, if you look at the examination schedule, the examination schedule, um, this and IABD will be conducted in two days. On day one, you will have 360 questions. Day two, you will have 140 questions. Um, this is also not very different because those of you who know about NBD2 would be knowing that NBD2 is also done in conducted in two days. So first day you have multiple choice questions and second day you have um, test uh, testlet based questions and clinical scenario based questions. So in, even in this pattern it's not very different from NBD1 or NBD2. The pattern is almost the same. Okay, but the part which actually scares you the most is the material, the content. And with my next uh, page, I'm going to kind of try to clear that query also. So on the INBD test site, you will they provide an information on the foundation knowledge area. What do you understand by foundation knowledge? So what do you understand by the foundation knowledge areas? Uh, is that it's the topics or the th that you should be able to understand and you should the questions would be based on these topics something like physics and chemistry physics and chemistry to explain the characteristic use of technologies molecular biological cellular system level development structure and function disease specific pathology so to just make it easier for you this is what you actually read when you study pathology or anatomy you study about systems you study about system pathology you study about system development you study about the body you study about pharmacology in part two so the foundation knowledge areas have just been explained in detail on the website but it is not any different from what you were studying before in your basic sciences subjects and another thing that you would find on the website is relevant disciplines. So foundation knowledge area one and the relevant discipline is gross head and neck anatomy, dental anatomy. Relevant discipline for the second foundation area is the physics and chemistry, is physiology, system pathology and so on. Each foundation knowledge area and the relevant discipline. So what they mean by is that these particular topics would be covered in these top subjects. So if you have to study about system biology, you would study physiology and anatomy. Pharmacology, obviously in pharmacology, if you have to study about um, disease specific pathology, that is oral pathology. So it is not any different. It's just that the, the material has been laid down in a very detailed form for you to understand and uh, to and they have made it very clear for you that this exam is a very clinically oriented exam and these are the foundation knowledge areas these are the things that we would want you to know and these are the relevant disciplines or the top subjects where you would find these areas 
and this is what you've been studying in part one and part two also you've been reading anatomy and physiology and pathology but the difference now that you would have to keep in mind is that when you study anatomy general anatomy when you study general pathology you would have to keep asking um, yourself a question the topic that i'm doing how clinically relevant it is or do i have to read the whole subject or prepare the whole topic um, or to just understand parts of it which are clinically relevant because this exam is clinically relevant so the, the subjects the disciplines are still the same it just your pattern of studying and pattern of understanding will be changing now when you prepare for this exam okay let me try to explain it further with uh, more examples now look at this question what is the best treatment for the labial buccal mucosa lesion this is a exam question that has been given on the jcnd website if you look at the question it tells you it gives you a history Patient's chief complaint is my gums hurt over my front tooth and also it tells about recurrent gingival lesion. It's a vesicular lesion between teeth 9 and 10 and then you're given certain medications and you have to decide which is the best. So in your understanding, if you are understanding uh, the question well, you have to have two things in mind. You should know about oral pathology so you're able to diagnose what lesion is the patient having that is on the labial buccal mucosa as well as what that lesion would require that would need your pharmacology knowledge to answer the medication so oral pathology and pharmacology are a relevant discipline and the foundation knowledge is the knowledge of the uh, buccal mucosa and the lesions right i think i'm getting a little clearer things are becoming better here okay let's move to the second question the second question is, uh, what which mechanism of action most likely explains the chief complaint? If you look here, again patient's history has been given that he has a diabetes, hypertension, he also complains gum bleeds easily and his medications are warfarin, otovastatin, aspirin. Again here, you have to look at your pharmacology, pathology, physiology to understand if the patient is on warfarin what happens so obviously if you have if you should know physiology you should know about coagulation you should know about blood clotting factors and then you should be knowing about pharmacology as to what other medications can cause bleeding and I'm, these kind of uh, points uh, and this is the knowledge this is the foundation knowledge area and the relevant disciplines here will be your physiology pathology and pharmacology okay third question which is very easy and OPG has been shown to you and they're asking you which tooth is indicated. So obviously here you have to know about dental anatomy and your oral radiology. So I think by now uh, you've understood what I was telling you that the subjects are the same as that of your NBD1 and 2. The only difference that is happening here is that when you study non-clinical subjects like anatomy and physiology, you have to keep the clinical relevance in mind and most of the questions in INVD will be asked on a case scenario basis okay uh, moving on so to summarize i would just tell you is that INVDE is your combined NBD1 and 2 however with more clinical relevance but the foundation areas again i'm stressing are the same so don't think that you'll have to pick up any other subject, uh, any other source material to study. The sources that you've been studying NBD1 and 2 for are the same. Okay. Um, however, another topic that has been added in INBD and stressed on is the research in the statistical areas. Now, when we teach in our coaching, we teach the students about uh, research in statistical areas. But for those of you who've not done this before, um, in the new INBD decks, you would find decks for research and statistical methodology. So you will be able to understand about the kind of questions or what kind of uh, topics you need to know in the research. I hope with this video, I have cleared your doubts about INBD and is that it's not very scary. It just the pattern has changed. It's already being conducted. It started getting conducted in August. And um, if you've not given NBD1, if you do not have the time to prepare, don't hesitate to study for INBDE. But if you are already preparing for NBD1, try your best and give NBD1. Um, you can always follow us on Facebook, our Board Aspirants group. 
and also um, stay tuned for my next video which be on how to look for various dental courses and schools how to know how many dental courses are there which you can enroll in and how to research a school to find out the, about the school's applications about the school's disciplines and about the school's mission so until next video just keep studying and like and subscribe and comment if you have any doubts okay good luck